In this video, we're going to be working on the team section for our full website build. Now, this is going to be a section to go ahead and display the people here that work at the company. Now, when we go ahead and hover over each image, you'll see we have a transition where we get a background color, the name of the employee, and also the position that they are in. So that is going to be what we're building here in this section. So let's head over to our index.html and get started. So to get started, let's go ahead and begin with our comment here for a team. And then let's go ahead and create our section tag here with the class of team as well. Now we need to go ahead and create a div for our container. So let's go ahead and do that, div.container. Now inside of here, we're going to start with our heading or our H2, and we're going to call this team. Okay. Now we need to go ahead and create our flex row, because as you can see here for this team section, it's going to be one row with four different columns for each one of our team members. So let's go ahead and begin here by creating our div with a class of flex and row. Now inside of here, we're going to be having individual columns. So we're going to go ahead and create one div with a class of column. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste in the other three, since once again, for this section, the markup will be the same for each one and to save some time. We'll go ahead and just copy and paste those in. <clears throat> and I will go ahead and leave a uh, link down below in the description to go ahead and copy and paste those in so you don't have to type them all out as well if you don't want to. Okay. So to begin here in our column, we're going to have an image and we can find these images in our image folder. And then we can go to uh, the root and we can find team one.jpg. After our image here, we're going to do a div with the uh, class of BG for our background when we hover over, and then we don't need to do anything with that. And then we need to have a div with a class of info for the info for each one of our employees. So we're going to have a paragraph tag here, and the first name is going to be Walter White. And his position here, we're going to create another paragraph tag, is going to be Chief Executive Officer. Okay. And there we go. That is the simple markup for each one of our columns here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is below this column, I'm going to go ahead and grab the rest of these here really quick. And then I'm going to copy and paste it in right below here. And if we take a look on our live demo, you can see we'll have something like this. So now that our markup is complete for this section, let's head over to our style sheet and get started. To get started with our styling here, let's go ahead and begin with a comment and then let's open up our team class below that. OK, so to begin, let's go ahead and style up our H2 and we're going to say or we're going to say text align this to the center. We then want to move on to our flex row and we're going to give this a gap of 32 pixels between each column. We are then going to say justify the content to the center. And then we're also going to put a property on here of flex wrap and set that to wrap. So this will allow our items to wrap onto another line once they run out of room, because we're going to go ahead and set the width of each column just in, or we're going to be doing that here in just a second. And this property will allow us to have the move on to the next line once they run out of room for the width that we define. So I'll kind of show you how this works with and without it, with and without it once we go ahead and set up our columns here, which we're going to get to right now. So for our columns, we're going to set a position relative on here. And since we're doing a mobile first approach, we're going to set the flex basis to 80% on a mobile view. We're going to then open up a media query here. And we're going to say a min width of 600 pixels and inside of this, we're going to say the flex basis will be 43, uh, not pixels, 43% of the width of the space available for each column. And then we also want to open up one more media query here. <clears throat> and we're going to say this one has a min width of 900 pixels. And each column will then take up. 21% of the space available. So if we head over to our demo here, you can see right now, let me go ahead and close this out right now. It's uh, taking up or having two rows here. So we still have to style up our images. And once we do that, we should see that it is in one row. So let's go ahead and get to that really quick so we can kind of demonstrate how this flex property of flex wrap works. So below our column here, let's head and open up our image tag here. And we're going to say display this as block. We're going to give it a width of 
And then we want to put a border radius on here of 50% as well. And that should go ahead and give us the result we are looking for. Now, if I remove, so let me go ahead and actually show demo this in two different ways. So if we go ahead and shrink it here, as we continue to shrink down, you'll see that it will collapse. And now we have two columns or two rows. Um, and then you can see here it's in a one uh, column fashion. I guess either way you look at it, we have uh, one one row here with four columns. We have two rows with two columns, however you want to go ahead and look at it. So you can see how the flex uh, wrap property works here. If I go ahead and remove it and we go ahead and shrink it down, it won't go ahead and um, adjust to the flex bases we had. So you can see here, they're just going to keep getting smaller and smaller and that's not what we want. So you can kind of see how the flex wrap property works uh, in regards to uh, shrinking our viewport down there. Okay, so moving along here, Let's go ahead and style up our background. So that was a class we gave to each one of our columns to apply a hover effect that when we hover over it, we get a nice blue background with, let me go ahead and close out of here, a nice blue background with the uh, uh, individual's name and position at the company. So let's go ahead and style this up. So we're going to start by giving this a position of absolute. We're going to give it a width of 100% and also a height of 100%. We then want to set the top to zero. We want to give this a border radius of 50% to match the image. And then we're simply going to give this a transition of 500 milliseconds ease and all. And that's all we need to do for this. We'll go ahead and give it a color when we get to our hover property of our column here. So. Lastly, we need to go ahead and style up our info, which has all the content for our individual employee here. So let's go ahead and start. We're going to display this as flex, give it a flex direction of a column. We then want to set the margin top to 12 pixels, and we're going to give this a color of white. So we're going to say FFF. We then want to justify and align all the content to the center. So we're going to use justify content and align items center to go ahead and achieve that. We're then going to give this a position of absolute. We're going to set the top to zero. And we're also going to set the width to 100% and the height to 100%. And then we need to set the opacity at the start to zero. Okay, now we need to go ahead and style up a few of our paragraph tags inside of the info. And let me go ahead and get down to it here on our index so I can show you and it is right here. So if you recall, in the last section, we had to do the same thing or might have been the section before we have a class here of info with two paragraph tags. So we can use pseudo selectors to target each one of these without having to use a class. So what we can say here, is we're going to say our paragraph tag. We're going to use a dot and say nth dash child and some parentheses, and we're going to say one. So this right here will get a reference to our paragraph tag of the name Walter White, Sarah Johnson, William Anderson, and Amanda Jepson. That's an easy way to do without um, using a class. So inside here, we're going to give this a margin bottom of eight pixels, a font weight of 700 to make that font a little bit thicker and that's going to be it and then we're going to do the same thing for our second paragraph tag except this time we're going to say two inside of our nth child selector and in here we're going to give this a smaller font size of 12 pixels and then give it a font size or font style of italic so font style and then italic here so if we save this and take a look Right now, when we hover over this, and that's the wrong one, if we hover over this, nothing is going to happen. So the way we're going to address that is we're going to say anytime we hover over the column, we want to make those uh, the background appear and also our content. So what we can do is go inside of our column property right here, and underneath our media query, we're going to do a and, a dot, or it's supposed to be, let's see, what am I doing here? There we go. So we're going to use the and, and sign, the two dots, and a hover to go ahead and select the column on the hover state. So 
Once we hover over the column, we want to select our BG class, and we're going to set the background color to an RGBA value of 0, 123, 255, and we're going to give that a 50% opacity by typing in 0.5. Okay, so now when we hover over this, and we're in mobile view right now, so it's not going to work. We hover over this, we get that nice blue background. Okay, but now we need to go ahead and make the content appear. So what we're going to do is we're going to go below our BG class here, and we're going to say .info, and we want to set the opacity to 1. Okay, so now when we look at this right here, it appears. But as you can tell on this compared to our demo, we can see that the text comes in very smoothly from the bottom. Now, if you recall, we set a margin top here on the info of 12. So that was intentional. And now when we go ahead and say on the hover, we want to set the margin top to zero, we'll get that smooth effect that we have uh, right there. So let me go ahead and do that. And I think we forgot to put the transition property on our info and we did so you can see how abrupt that is when you hover over it we don't want that we want that to be a lot smoother so let's go ahead and implement that transition property on here of 500 milliseconds ease and all okay so now when we hover over this you can see that the background appears and the text comes in from the bottom very smoothly so that is going to be it for all the styling for this section last but not least let's head back up to the top here and add our team uh, class to this uh, section of styling for our padding and that will be it so if I save this and we go ahead and look at it now you can see we have the padding and everything looks great so if we go ahead and shrink this down a little bit you can see here it's put it into mobile view actually you know what we'll just go ahead and do it like this so you can see as we get smaller here um, everything uh, shrinks down and collapses as it should and if we get to mobile view right here you can see it'll go into a one uh, column uh, fashion here and we still have all of our hover effects as long as you're not on mobile so that is going to do it for this section next up we're going to be actually getting near the end we're going to be working on the client section and then we have the contact form which we're going to be implementing using firebase and firestore to send that data over to firestore so next up we'll be working on the our client section we have the contact us form and also i forgot about the footer so a few more sections left and then we'll be all set with this full website build. So we'll see you in the next video.